So I won the race and on the way back from Nashville to Charlotte, I was drinking tequila. <laughs> and I was drunk as fuck. When Dave dropped me off by my place, uh, I didn't know where I was. <laughs> After that much tequila, yeah, I wouldn't know either. Like, I am. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruben Garcia Jr. Hello, I'm Rogelio Lopez from Mexico. And this is the Derek Prime Siglia Show. Can I drive you? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the show, and we have another exciting episode. This time it is an international flair. It's the first time we have had drivers that were not born in the United States. We have Ruben Garcia Jr. and Rogelio Lopez. Both of them have raced in the NASCAR Mexico Series. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Derek, for having us. It, this is uh, great. I should say, uh, bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. Sí, bienvenidos. <laughs> Hola. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, I know a few words in Spanish uh, here and there because uh, my, my first wife was uh, Venezuelan, so she tr did try to teach me Spanish along the way. So uh, uh, I know a few words. So be cabron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know cabron. No? Yeah. <laughs> I know what that is. Oh, yeah. But uh, I, I know a few words, but not enough to be able to form sentences. But uh, how have you guys been? What's what's going on? Let's catch up. The last time I talked with you guys was the K&N series, the E-series. So what's been going on? Ruben, you first. Yeah, a lot. So um, for now, I'm still racing in Mexico, the NASCAR Mexico series, and also a touring car series in Mexico called Supercopa. So I'm doing those two full-time seasons and also we we started almost three years ago a program to help Develop younger drivers that want to move up into the NASCAR NASCAR or any ladder mainly but it started with NASCAR here in the US we currently helped uh, Three or four drivers that are already racing here in the US and that has kept us busy and traveling a lot between Mexico and the US <laughs> So and what about you Rogelio? Well, I'm still racing. It's been a while since I don't see you. Yeah. Um, we're trying to, to bring drivers from Mexico and Latin America to help them with uh, uh, their way into into NASCAR. And we've been kind of busy, like uh, flying back and forward to Mexico City. Uh, but it's it, it's been um, probably the, the, the greatest work i ever done to work with kids right now i'm really enjoying it mm -hmm. and we've been doing great now what are the age ranges of the kids you guys are working with oh. this year it changed we <laughs> it were changed working with kids from like 16 to 18 okay but this year we got a 11 year old <laughs> his really? kids is racing the bandos okay. and he's doing some uh go-kart uh testing at the gopro gopro track okay yeah which is now track track house. Uh, track track house. Track house. Track house. Yeah. yeah yeah but this kid is amazing what's but, his name uh arturo arturo avillon Okay. He's he's fast. Uh, I mean, all the way around. Okay. In the house, in the <laughs> track. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. He hits the chip <laughs> constantly. <laughs> oh, okay. He's, he's got a big personality. Too. Yeah, he does. He does oh, okay, like a good. very good personality. But you can tell how big a difference one year makes in the in on those kids. Like we have a 16 year old and an 18 year old, and they're very. It's like talking to a kid and to an adult. Mm -hmm. Two years make a huge difference. Okay, so yeah, you guys also have to figure out, you, you know, how to how to talk with kids yes. too. Well, well, you have two sons of your own. So. I have two sons, Rogelio right. and Leo, mm -hmm. but uh, they are into the soccer. Oh, okay. uh, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna bring him into the racing uh, business. Yet. Yet. Not yet. Yeah. No, nah, not yet. I mean, yeah, it's uh, too expensive. Let it's too expensive, Let and and right. I mean. They're really good soccer players, so keep them there. That's yeah. good for your wallet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, too. Much better for your wallet. Yeah. They, they become a, well, football. It's known as a, all around the world. Yeah. Only thing you, you need is a, a football soccer, and that's it. <laughs> 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 that's cool. But they, they go to your races, though, right? They go to the races. They enjoy it. But, okay. Uh, I mean stay there where you are. Right. <laughs> and, and these the, I've been watching some of the YouTube channels and stuff. The NASCAR Mexico Series races, they're no joke, man. You guys get like 35, 40 cars that yeah. show up for those races. That's insane. I mean, you guys have got a ton of competition in, in, in those cars. And that's something very particular about the Mexico Series is that because of the tires we run, uh, there's not a lot of tire fall off. So in Mexico, nobody has a clue about tire conservation or like you don't win the race in the first lap. No, they they see green, they go wide open. It's go hard. All in. Oh, yeah. so you're yeah. going all in. hard. It's, it's all in. From one, I mean, lap one to mm. lap 200. 
you're you're yeah so you're not holding back or anything no we're no. on the wheel so when you guys came here to race in the united states and you have to you know conserve the car for for the end how was that for you guys what kind of an experience was that well back in the days the tire was kind of different mm -hmm. from what it is right now mm -hmm. so i was pretty used to that i mean long races but especially uh to get used to a bigger car heavy cars and oval tracks because like 20 years ago when i start like racing we didn't do much uh oval tracks so that was the most interesting thing uh when i came here okay to try to guess adjust to always making left yeah. Because it can wear on you sometimes because it's like, oh, you know, again, again, you know, it's, but in the focus that you have to have for it is tremendous. It's, it's, it's really different from a road course to a, to a noble track mm -hmm. because um, I, I remember Andy Santere, he helped me a lot. Uh, do you remember Matt Kovalok? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys really teach me how to do it like in three races because I had to move like really fast to, to be like uh, with them and the set rhythm and the, on, on, on the race. So they helped me a lot, uh, but back in the days it was so much different than what it is right now. Right, well the funny thing is too is you both came from different eras of the East series because you were in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. you were in the mid teens, yep. uh, the 2000 teens, and when you were running in it, you had guys like you know uh, Matt Kovalev, Mike Olson, Mike Jerry Olson, Marquis, uh, uh, Brian Wall. Um, I'm trying to think who, who else, else was there. Um, there I were, thought you were racing in the Junior Johnson area. Je <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Anton, he was Jeff racing. Anton. Yeah, even Joey Logano. That, you know, he that was, was racing in uh, his first year. Uh, Austin Dillon. Mm -hmm. Uh, who else was there? Um, right, it was a much different yeah, time I'm, back then. Yeah, I mean, between then. like too many like gener different generations, you know. I mean, because that's when uh, the young guys took over mm -hmm. with uh, Joe Gibbs, Hendrix, um, yeah. Richard Childress' team. Right, because so. you had Mark Davis driving for Mark Davis Joe for, for Joe, Joe Gibbs. Gibbs. Yeah, Jeffrey Earnhardt driving Jeffrey for Earnhardt. DEI. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and your first win, you had to beat Joey Logano. Like, that's, <laughs> that's my biggest trophy. <laughs> 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 that's that's my intro. That's right. my intro. No, I mean, we, we were. I mean, I remember Nashville like it was yesterday. Really? Uh, it was a, a nice race. Um, uh, I, I remember we we had to take care of the tires because track was like really rough on tires. Yeah. And I saved my tires for the end. Um, it was a, a good fight with Joy. It was it was neat. I do remember that uh, because uh, it was hot that day too. It was I, hot. Yeah, yeah, it hot. was super hot was that day. July twenty two. Yeah, July twenty two, twenty three. I guess for real. I won my first race on July second. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember because it was my uh, granddad's birthday. Really? So I won the race, and on the way back from Nashville to Charlotte mm -hmm. on the RB. I was drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> and I was drunk as fog. <laughs> but <laughs> I have a, a, a cell phone company that used to sponsor me. Telcel. Telcel. Yeah, yeah. So I have a free phone okay. you know, from, from here to, to Mexico. So I was in a phone call with my granddad and my family. And the mariachis were playing and we were drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> and when when Dave <laughs> dropped me off by my place, riding um, Cornelius, uh, I didn't know where I was. <laughs> <laughs> After that much tequila, yeah, I wouldn't know either. Like, what the fuck I am? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember pretty much of the race. <laughs> on their way back to, to Charlotte. It, it, it was so much fun. It's usually how a win celebration goes. Yeah. Though. You, you know, we <laughs> yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. when uh, my brother won his first race, yeah, we partied all night. So I, 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 I remember the way from Nashville to, to Charlotte. It's a, it's a nice uh, ride because you go through the mountains and mm -hmm. everything. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. But I mean, my, I throw up everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mess. It was a mess. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't remember where the trophy is. I mean, it you, was a guitar. You lost the trophy? I lost the guitar. You lost the guitar? Yeah, and I got to buy another one. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it was a mess. It was a mess, but I have fun a lot. Oh, <laughs> my God. I could just imagine what the conversations with the family back home was like because the the races weren't live then, so they couldn't. They had to wait to see it, right? Um, first uh, broadcast, uh, I mean, race was um, in Fontana. Okay. And I was on my roof. When you I was, I was leading the race <laughs> um, 10 laps before the, the race ends. In California. In California. I ran over my, the roof, and that was the first race on uh, alive in Mexico. And they saw it. And my family saw it. Oh. And they were call, trying to call me, but I was like on the... The, the hospital the yeah the uh, the, the care center <laughs> they were the carousel yeah uh, it was also how did you get upside down uh, i'm trying to remember how that happened home home eric holmes remember okay. eric holmes mm -hmm. yeah he turned me around um, um it was a pretty spectacular uh crash air put the air catching Airburn. pick you up yep. really mm -hmm. no kidding. and that was the last time uh the west series went into fontana because of me <laughs> oh no <laughs> so i'm the first on everything <laughs> now you, was that in dave davis's car when yeah, you were driving yeah, for him yeah. okay gotcha now it was oh uh, five oh five oh four oh five okay i'm trying to, i bet you we could find it we look yeah. it up on youtube it's on youtube it's on youtube way to call him out <laughs> yeah, <Ruben. yeah>. okay <laughs> <laughs> so now um so ruben uh you said you haven't raced in the united states since when my last race was in uh 2019 Okay. At Dover. But I've come back to race with the NASCAR Mexico Series in the U.S. We race at the Coliseum this year. Okay. But, uh, and we race Phoenix, too. Oh, that's, that's before, right? Phoenix was before. Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's definitely something I miss. Yeah. And especially, you know what? I've been going to help Eloy, mm -hmm. uh, who's racing for Red Racing on the late model program this year. And I've, I've gone to the late model races with him. That's something I really miss. Late model racing is very fun to me. Is it? Uh, yeah. What is it about it that's fun? Is it that because the pressure's off? Because there aren't so many eyes on you? What uh, What is it about it that's fun? Is it the 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 grassroots part of it? Or learning? I think it's the grass the grassroots part of it, and um, I just enjoy how there, sometimes you have like the the junior motorsports cars that they are very professionals. They show up with brand new cars with a lot of equipment and engineers working on them and sometimes you see someone pull on a tow truck with a, a <laughs> 20 year old late model with a two piece fire suit <laughs> <laughs> and they run just as fast as the uh, JRM cars so right. that's something that I really enjoy doing uh, the late model is a, it's a car that it's pretty fun to drive mm -hmm. um, you can drive the shit out of it it's not like a very heavy car that you have to carry momentum and, and way more other stuff you have to worry about air run stuff uh, late model is I feel like it's kind of the purest stock car driving style Really? Okay. Cool. Have you uh, are you been trying to, uh, by any chance, like run any cars tour races or anything like that? I would love to. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I was putting all my attention and effort to try to come back and race maybe a truck or Xfinity car. Mm -hmm. But if some I can pull something to buy to run the car tours championship, I, I would love to. Mm -hmm. Now, what goes into a week for you? Because both of you guys are traveling back and forth between here and Mexico. Um, you uh you have uh, you're driving for a couple of teams right yes so do you don't you don't have a regular like full-time job you are a race car driver as a full-time job yes okay cool so what does a week go into for you when do you have to fly back so like this week this week we fly to mexico well i'm going to fly to san luis which is like a five-hour drive from mexico city i'm going to fly to san luis tomorrow on thursday my team's testing, I'm not, but my team's testing there, so they wanted me to be there. And then on, on Friday, we do some media obligations. Saturday, uh, practice, practice qualifying. qualifying. Sunday, we race. And Monday, he comes back because our, our the kids were coaching race we're doing the, the summer, summer shootout. At the shootout, mm -hmm. right, yeah. which is where I caught but back up with he you. He has to stay in Mexico for another race, so I have to be here for two weeks more. Okay. And then he comes back to help me out with the kids. Are you running a full season? Yes, both. Both series both full series. time. Yeah. So that is Supercopa and NASCAR Mexico. NASCAR Me now, what are the differences in the cars between the two of those? 
So NASCAR Mexico, um, to give you guys an idea, it's similar to a late model, but we run bigger tracks. We run tracks that are over, our smallest one is half a mile and we go all the way up to mile and a quarter, something sure. like gateway. Right, you guys have some big ovals yeah. in Mexico. I yeah. saw some which were really right. impressive so, yeah. and cool looking too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're pretty cool uh, race tracks and fun to drive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. Uh, so, uh, and do the cars, uh, like what do they have as far as like horsepower, the the, Ma the NASCAR Mexico Series cars? They run uh, around 500 horsepower. Okay. But the sometimes we, we have the issue that we go to places that are very, very high in altitude. Mm -hmm. so, like near 8,000 feet above yeah, sea level. You don't feel the power. Of so the they lose a lot of power with that mm -hmm. altitude. Because the air is so thin. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. And then the Super Copa, it's kind of like a Transam. It's a Howie frame with mm -hmm. ILS3 engine and um, sequential transmission, and it's a full road course car. Okay, and Very that's all they run is road courses? Only road courses, okay. yes. Paddle shifting, right? Yeah, paddle shifting. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They're cool. pretty yeah. fun to drive. They're very, very <laughs> fun to drive. <laughs> cool. So now, to, to go back to it, though, to look at both of your records, you're both NASCAR Mexico Series champions, right? You have four championships? Yep. Okay, you have one. One. Okay, but you're both, like, a couple away from each other on the all-time win list, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, you have 29 wins or, or uh, something I, like I'm that? I'm close to 30. 30, now. okay. And you have, what, 26? 26. 26, okay. Yep. So you guys get on each other about uh, <laughs> yeah. who's going to run better yep. and all that? Oh, my God. So, uh, um, so after you race, you'll fly back here to the states. Yes, after I race NASCAR Mexico, then I, I test and race in in Supercopa, and I fly back Monday morning to okay. for the summer shootout finale. Okay, and uh, the summer shootout is it's, it's about to get it's different. It gets it's, they get rough. <laughs> yes. They get rough. It's like um, I don't know. I it reminds me when I take my kids to the school. You know, for for meetings <laughs> when I go there because it's the fun thing with to work with them is that they don't really really know what they're doing. I mean, they just jump in and drive in circles around, and they are just there to win and have fun. Mm -hmm. And as a professional drivers, sometimes we forget that it's always about having fun. Right. So. That really uh, pumped me up when I see these kids like having fun and their smiles and everything. I, I really enjoy it. I, it's really nice. It brings you back to the purity of it. Yes, <clears throat> you it, know that's it's, it's pure you, racing. Right? You lose it's, a lot of perspective when you get more professional, and then you have so much sponsorship obligations or contracts you have to follow. You forget about why you started doing that mm -hmm. do you like doing it this way because it brings you back to that as well as being able to work in higher levels well <laughs> yes i mean <laughs> it does it does i do like it a lot because of that because it, it reminds me mm -hmm. and also there's a lot of stuff that you forget about the basics of driving so when you start coaching someone that is have just started racing it reminds you stuff that sometimes you give like you forgive mm -hmm. uh, or i mean forget about racing okay so it's it's a it's a very cool way to just bring you back to the main purpose when you started racing cool now you said also that you're not just trying to help guys get into nascar but other forms of racing do you guys have any other prospects for like indycar or uh the, the thing in, is our or program like it's about uh to be like a, a real driver more complete driver because we work on nutrition fitness we have a sports a, psychologist a, uh -huh, a sports psychologist that help us to work with them uh, now are they all based here or are they yes. from mexico they're from mexico but they spend time here yeah. one of them is already living here eloy, oh, okay. eloy, 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 eloy falcon whatever he lives here mm -hmm. we start working with him three years, three years ago, ago three years ago uh, and also with andres uh but we bring drivers only for the summer only for the summer and the, the main goal is to put him into the rep program right now but that's uh, for us that's not the only way to make it through so we're looking for 
some other programs to to bring more drivers from from Mexico. We right. find that in Mexico, the open wheel culture is it's very big mm -hmm. because Sergio Perez is running Formula One, and then we have a Formula One race in Mexico City. So the young kids they they look to open wheel racing a lot. Right. So we've seen a lot of kids that we talk to them about coming to stock car racing. And they say like, eh, yeah, it's cool, but I, I do like open wheel racing. So that's why we had to like, not just st stick to stock car racing and open to maybe racing IndyCar or, or another op form of open wheel racing. Okay, yeah, because uh, I, you know, uh, uh, in other countries, Formula One is is king. Yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's king. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go to any other country that's not the United States, and they love Formula One yep. racing, and mm -hmm. you know they race all over the country. But getting there, the money to get there it's, is just it's out of this world. Uh, do you do you try to explain to these guys you could probably your dollar will go farther by going this way? That's something we we tell them, but that's something that the kid doesn't necessarily understand, mm -hmm. but their parents do. Okay. So, because it's it's real, and then the other thing they face is if you are sixteen, seventeen years old, and you haven't raced anything at all in Europe, then you're way too late. Right. Yeah, because they're already getting Formula One drivers in their teens. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> yeah. which is similar to through here, here in the United yeah. States. Yeah. There was a kid, uh, a guy that was running at the shootout last night. I was talking to his crew chief. He's at eighteen years old. He just decided that he wanted to start racing and. You know, you know, not 18, impossible, right? but you're it's way too old against us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's old. I mean, the last time someone did it that late was William Byron, and he was 14. It so ha it happened to me when I came here 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was on my prime around I was 25, 26, mm -hmm. and I thought I was on my prime. And when I look back, there was Joey and these guys. They were 16, 17 years old, so I was like, no, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done. But I mean, that's what we're trying to do right now, to bring uh, young drivers so they can uh, be good and more professional at the end, mm -hmm. but without having fun. That's our main goal, because they're going to start doing like uh, uh, different things and open doors for everyone in Mexico, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, it also, you know, if they're successful, you're successful. Yeah. Everybody, everybody rises together. It's a win-win scenario. Yeah, and the other thing that I think is cool is you guys do everything with them: the media training, yep. mm -hmm. a place to live, uh, exercise and nutrition, even taxes and immigration stuff. Uh, you guys. Yeah, that's we, something very important. That's the, huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've seen, we've seen a couple of drivers that they just came to the U.S. and race, and then never worried about taxes or or having their works visa or their green card or, or all the paperwork ready mm -hmm. and they have to go back because because it they happened didn't ha to me because oh, it, really? they didn't have the it happened to me really i didn't know i have to have a, a work visa oh and they kicked me out for two weeks while i was racing so i have to do all the paperwork to get a work visa in one week and i couldn't go back to mexico after that i I vaguely and I stayed for one hearing. year, like not seeing my family. I didn't, where I didn't go back to Mexico, really, well, because I didn't know. I didn't know even where where to live. Wow. First time I came here. Wow, no kidding. So yeah. where did you where did you live when you first uh, came? Do here? you remember uh, John Freeman? Yeah, mm -hmm. he owns the um, Johnny Fly. Johnny Fly clothing. And, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the only one to help me and tell and tell me where to go and not to go. Okay. <laughs> and I was, John, please <laughs> help me out with this. Okay, wh what do you have? The only thing I have is a credit card and my, my savings. Right. Okay, you go there, ask. And I was like, John, I don't speak English like really well. Please mm -hmm. come with me and help me out. Okay, let's go. So he was one of the the ones that really helped me with that. But right now, I mean, they have a place where to live. They know where not to go. Right. We have the, that, um, the paperwork, I mean, visas and taxes, help. I mean, we have pretty much everything. Everything covered. Right? But uh, that's great though, because you guys have lived it. You had to, yes. you know, go through those, those pitfalls mm -hmm. to, kind of be able to teach the next generation or the next guys to come along, be like, do this, don't do this, and all of that. Uh, 
The other thing too is, is the fitness too. You guys, it's been a while since I've seen you guys. You guys have built like brick shit houses. Holy cow, man! Like I went to your your uh, Facebook page the other day and you tacos were, on beer. Uh, That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, no, that don't look like tacos and beer. But no, I saw you doing like a CrossFit uh, training two girls in in what looked like a. a, a beautiful crossfit area in like the caribbean or something is that your business it, it, it was my business i sold it uh a month ago mm -hmm. uh it was like a fitness center where we used to do the nutrition the the fitness the the sports psychologists the supplements we have a cafeteria we have everything um recovery room mm -hmm. uh, uh so i was pretty involved with it so i worked with uh ruben and we try to mix that program into our program mm -hmm. for uh, our drivers. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to be physically fit to, to yep. race. I mean, and that's, well, that's the thing. Most of, of the drivers right now, um, or back in the days, they, they didn't work out or right. they weren't in shape to be ready for a long race. Uh, right now, I, I have seen uh, drivers in Cup, um, like two weeks ago in Nashville, it was like close to 140 inside the car. Mm -hmm. And when they went out of the car, they were, were out, like right. really were out. Heat so, exhaustion. Um, so we tried to explain them that it's not, I mean, you have to look good, obviously, but uh, to be ready for a tough race like that, I mean, you have to work out, you have to eat like really well. Uh, and you have to be ready also for a for a big crash. I mean, your body has to be ready to support those, the, impact. Uh, the, the impact and the forces uh, the car does. Right. So it's, it's part of uh, our program too. Right, I mean, well, th I recently had a, a surgery, uh, my hernia surgery recently, and the doctors even told me, you know, I do exercise uh, at least three days a week. I'm on the level you guys are at. You know? <laughs> I'm pushing 50 years old, so you know, I'm <laughs> slow. I'm trying to, you know, take care of myself. But he said, you know, the, the healthier you are, the faster you'll bounce back. Too. Yep. That's the other thing with your recovery. So what does a, a week of working out consist of for you guys? And where, where do you work out? Is it at home or would you go to a gym? No, we go to a gym. Uh, when we're here in the U.S., we, we work out together at the gym in, in Cornelius. And then when we're in Mexico, we live far away from each other. And Mexico City is a huge city and mm -hmm. traffic is horrible. So anyway. we can't go to the same gym every day because it'll it'll be at least one hour drive going there and then one hour at least wow. going back. So we train separate, but based off the same fundamentals. Okay, and what are some of those uh, fundamentals? Well, it's, well, it's um, uh, we do a lot of uh, metabolic training, mobility, mm -hmm. and also strength. But the most important thing is reco how we recover uh, after a race because I mean, between races, we have a short period of uh, time. So yes, we work out, but during the racing season, we have to recover fast. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing. How did, now for, there's probably some young racers that are listening in. Uh, how do you recover? Like what is some of the advice to give them that they Well, you can do strange, you can go on. The, the Winghoff the, method. The, 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 what is that? The, the Winghoff method. What is We've it? What done is it a lot. It's when when you submerge in the, water the with ice. Cryotherapy. Oh, you guys do the, the ice baths. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. You listen. I, you get used to. Oh, cold goes right through <laughs> me because I only weigh like 160 pounds, so I get cold really fast. <laughs> we, we do it like two or three times during the week. Yeah. Ice baths. Yeah. Really. And the nap, the, the nap you take after doing it. Yeah. It's like sleep for eight hours. Really? Straight. Yeah, it's, it's crazy the, re how much the relief. It's awesome. Now awesome. the ice does what? It just it stops the soreness and helps with the taking the like flow, the, the blood flow the, the blood to flow. every single okay. hidden corner in your body. Now, do you recommend this for your drivers to do before a race? After the race. After, after the race. After okay. The race. Now, what about before the race? Is any prep before the race? Oh, I mean, it it takes like from Monday to Wednesday. Mm -hmm. it start like slowing down i mean workouts because you have to be ready and not tired to for the race you mm -hmm. know what i mean and then, so we slow down 
probably Wednesday and, and Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, after the race on Mondays, that's probably the toughest day. Really? Yeah, because racing a car is not real, like, um, physically, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. more mental. Uh, but after that, you feel really tired, but you, your body needs that uh, feeling, not your, not your brain. Okay. So after the, after the race on Monday is really really uh, tough workout, and if you have a, a race next weekend, we start like working more on mobility mm -hmm. and recovery. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. Well, you guys, you guys <laughs> are on it, man. So when you guys, uh, so when you go, to, uh, Ruben, when you go to an ARCA race uh, now, what are your duties at the track when you get there? Usually just work with the driver to help them work with all the tools. Nowadays we have from like telemetry, dart fish, um, the GPS speed data, and all, all the tools that nowadays the ARCA series has. Mm -hmm. uh, since they incorporated the digital dash and the, the Ilmor engine and work with those tools, help them do a process where they are a step ahead on getting ready for the practice, have a work plan, um, improve their communication with the crew chief because that's very important and it's something that they struggle a little bit because most of, most of them, they have uh, very good English, fluent English but the, the slang and there's a few terminology that, that they struggle to, to communicate what they want to with their crew chiefs, especially when, when, when they work with older crew chiefs, that they have a big <laughs> slang and a southern, a very strong southern <laughs> accent. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very hard you, for them. Do you know yeah. what? Face to face. Right. It's really different on the radio. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just don't pick it up or they just don't get it. Mm -hmm. So we help them with the right language. So what are some of those slang words that they Ooh. don't know? Is, is, is snug. It like snug, okay, <laughs> yeah. tight and loose, because they're used to oversteer and understeer. Oversteer and huh? understeer, yeah. Okay. Tight and loose, but that's easy, but snug or like forward bite or mm -hmm. um, you need to cut better and they like cut what cut means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So how do you cut, how do you explain it to him? You just be, give the straight him, translation tell, tell to Spanish. The, tell him the uh, what Eloy. Yeah, the uh. Eloy didn't have a very fluent English when we first moved here. So mm -hmm. he went out on the summer shootout with the legend car for the first few laps. Do you know uh, CJ? CJ. He owns the X60 team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the one in front. Right, right. right the one right across you. from us. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, he jumps out of the car, he starts talking to CJ, and I, I just walked, I always walk and listen what they say, so then we can have a, a talk after that to see, I would change this, I would I would fix this, and Eli was like, CJ, I turn wheel, and <laughs> <laughs> And CJ was like, you, you what? <laughs> yeah, turn wheel, a lot, and <laughs> he was trying to explain. But before that, I asked Eloy, hey, how's your English? And he was like, 100% perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I speak English very well. Okay. <laughs> oh, when I saw that, I was like, okay. <laughs> now, yeah, now he comes. We got to work to do. We got some work to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. That's wh and w when we came back to Mexico, his dad asked me, hey, how's Eloy doing? And I was like, okay, um, driving uh, wise, he's he's pretty good. Um, we probably have to contract an English teacher for him because we have we have no time. So contract an English teacher, and he contract a teacher from here, mm -hmm. and he was taking classes at five in the morning, yeah, I guess, yeah. really, just to pick it up on English. And now he's doing much much but better he dated an american girl so that helped he's he been was he's <laughs> been dating a few okay not the fastest way to uh, 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 for real for real that's something <laughs> we look for that 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 way he had to force himself to speak in english every day right that's yeah. true so yeah the the more you do it the more you get used yeah, to it yeah so. mm -hmm. yeah i i remember 
when when Daniel Suarez came to the K K and N, uh, you know, they were mm-hmm. trying to get the spotters to yeah. you know to communicate with him and all that, just to try to get him up to snuff. But yeah, I remember that. But uh, getting back to your E Series career, you had uh, three wins in the E Series. So the first one came at Memphis, right? Yes. Uh, a track that's not even around anymore. Yeah. For real? Oh, it's yeah. gone? I, yeah. They I don't, tore it down? I don't know if it, they tore it down, but I, I saw pictures of it recently. It looked pretty run down. Uh, I, I think that's how it was when I raced there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. There was grass coming in between the softball and the and the really? race for the surface. <laughs> it must have been near some of the end of the years with them. But, I mean, the guys that you had to beat, too. I mean, you had Anthony Alfredo in the field that you had to beat. Tyler Ankrum, who is in the truck series now. I mean, uh, uh, there were a bunch of them. Uh, Haley yeah, I think D- Derek Krause was in. there. Yeah, Derek Krause, all of those guys. So three wins that year driving for Rev. Uh, you carried the banner for that team that year. How was the, the first? How did the first win at Memphis go down for you? The, well, it was crazy, but I, I'll take it back just to put into perspective what it took to win my first race because at least uh four or five times i got really really close to victory lane and you know the first time i was close i was it was at greenville i was running second running down the leader we, had we a, got in a fight <laughs> we got in a fight <laughs> you two <laughs> did <laughs> yeah i was he, trying he was, to help Ruben. <laughs> yeah, he was at the racetrack with me uh-huh. and i was r- catching the leader almost got to his bumper and the caution came out and then uh, it was a long caution we ended up doing a green white checker and he spun me out so was that burton no it was i think it was riley herbs that was uh <laughs> that that's the uh uh american version of stock car race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah yeah i know the uh, and we talk about this too on the show i i try to try to push more of the racing with respect because uh, lately, I go to the track and I see the the kid in second just punt the the leader out of the way and and win the race and I, I just I hate seeing that. Yeah, I know. And when you're on the receiving end of it, oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know your 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 temper goes right through the roof. You're and, ready to fist fight after that. Yeah. So you come close a couple of times. Yeah, a lot of times. So the first time he actually motivated me because I was like, oh, I think I can win a few races. I was very close today. So. I tried again a few times at, at Thompson, at Watkins Glen, at Dover, at Iowa, very, very close multiple times and just it didn't happen or late cautions or so I started to get very frustrated. And then the, that year, the first race at Dover, I led at least 60 percent of the race. Mm-hmm. And then coming to the white a lap before the white flag, the right front blew up and I killed the fence in turn two. So. After that, I really got very, very frustrated. Like, man, I, I think this first win is just not going to happen. <laughs> and um, we went to Memphis. No, I, I crashed at Dover. Then I almost won at Watkins Glen, finished second mm. in a very dramatic finish. And then we went to Memphis. And in um, after we put tires, Everyone told me just save your tires. Memphis is a very rough place. Save tires. Save tires. Save tires. I said no, I won't save tires. I'll I'll just <laughs> get the lead and then I'll figure something out to keep everyone behind me, and that's what I did. I, I like I pulled away from the field. The last few laps, few laps, I was like a second slower than everybody else. But my my lead was so big that nobody caught me. Okay, so you can back that a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> no and uh, finally the first win came, and it 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 really changed my my career and my i i would say it, it's something that changed my life because um i really thought and doubted about myself if that first win was ever going to show well also the the tracks that you get to race at you know to to compete i mean living in in mexico i mean i'm sure you've heard of watkins Glen and dover and all these places and then finally get to race at them and then also get the win at them because you did win Dover, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I ended mean, up winning that year. What was uh? Yeah, and you had to beat Brandon McReynolds and Derek Krause, who was in the race, and Sam Mayer and Harrison Burton, Anthony Alfredo. <laughs> with you know. Todd was uh the best fight with Todd Gilliland. We fought for like fifty laps straight, side to side, passing you, each other. You and who? And Todd Gilliland. Oh, Todd Gilliland. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean. It was a uh, uh, it was a great race. I mean, you had actually a really dominant car that day. I think you led what seventy five laps. Yeah, a lot. Like that. So yeah, <clears throat> and, and you know a huge stage like Dover, 
you know, for you guys to win there in front of all the the NASCAR crowd, you know, that's it's like an audition for yeah. you for you guys. That's track. Yeah, I, I love that place. Dover. Dover, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I remember Jefferson telling me like, if you're going to win races, win them when we're racing the same at the same place as the Cup Series or at least the Xfinity Series. Mm -hmm. So, having uh, good races at places like Dover, Bristol, uh, that Bristol that was another race that I should have. <laughs> another one that got away, right? Yeah. Yeah. I should have won that uh, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it it was very important. I remember it was very important because I knew all the big teams were watching, uh, all the people that should know your name mm -hmm. uh, were watching. So I felt like that was something I always focus on. We, we did everything we could to bring our best uh, car to those races. Right, because you, you definitely performed at Rev. I mean, there were a lot of drivers that came from that program that are in the Cup Series now. I mean, yeah. Bubba, Kyle Larson, uh, Daniel, Daniel yeah. yeah, Daniel Suarez. I mean, so... Raya Caru, he's doing pretty good. Yeah, that's true. He's in the Truck Series now, mm -hmm. too. So, uh, um, and, and you know what the funny thing is, too? You guys are in a really good position because as far as American stock car racing goes, the biggest avenue is uh, through Rev. Mm -hmm. But being now that you guys have come onto the scene, you're kind of giving another option of where you guys can put talent and place talent. Yeah. So is that kind of what you want to do? Uh, yes. Is just definitely. kind of like definitely. widen the broadband? Definitely. Yes. Okay. And and we work together with, with Rev. And <coughs> it's a great tool what the Drive for Diversity program has um, since they offer you the opportunity to race without bringing anything to the table, just your helmet and your talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's huge because not, not everyone can afford to start a career with their family money. Right. Uh, and that's a fact. So that's something that they do great. That's something we would love to have the same opportunity at, at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but also to be able to race for Rev, there's a few steps you have to take before that. And that's where we come in place because we know how Mexico and, and Latin America is and we know how the U.S. market works. So that bridge between Mexico or any country from Mexico and South uh, works and, the, and to take the step in to move into the U.S. and start racing and go to the combine and, and, and race for Rev or for any team here in the U.S. That's the bridge that we're trying to close. What are what are some of those steps that you guys have to teach them? Mainly, well, besides... Sacrifice. Yeah. I mean... Bes advice and uh, No, and the, the sacrifice to be here by yourself without your family, oh. food, friends, all the environment you have in Mexico. Right. Or, that's uh, the, uh, the, the main uh, thing we have to teach them. As soon as you are here, you are by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want to make your dream come true, you have to sacrifice everything, mm -hmm. everything, because probably it's, it's easiest for you guys, for American uh, people to make a career in racing because you don't have to go like anywhere else. You guys have everything here. But for us to come to America with a different culture, food, no friends, no family, no nothing, right. which, and uh, also no money. That's mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest thing. It's, it's, it's really difficult to understand for them. It, well, it's a different world. It's it a is. totally it is. different world. They, they, they think it's the United States, it's, it's Disneyland, and it is not. No. It is it is tough. You have to, you have to work tough. for, yeah, you have to work for what you want. And yeah. you, you make, uh, you have to build your name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, we have a, probably a, f a few kids that really uh, have the tools to come over and success. Mm -hmm. But we have to w work with them right next to them. So they don't, uh, how can I say, like uh, jump around or l lose focus on what they want. Okay. Because they, they're really young and it's pretty easy for them to lose focus. Well, especially at a young age where, yeah. you know, your attention is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's cool. But that's, that's cool that you guys are 
at least here for them too because while they are here you're you're helping them along the way so they're yeah. not completely alone like you guys were right is that how that works yes mm-hmm. yes it is even to clean a place you know we woke, we woke them up like really early in the morning hey clean your clean your room uh, do laundry do your, do your bed do your laundry mm-hmm. uh, get the trash out i mean right adult uh, responsibilities yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you're 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 teaching them to be grown ups too yes. because yes. in mexico is like, like like i say it's a different culture and we have people that helps with everything nannies uh, people that cook for us cook uh, people that uh, make and clean our houses because for us it's pretty cheap mm-hmm but when we come here, you have nothing. Right, you right. have to do everything. And they're really young and they're pretty used to that life in Mexico. Right. So it's it's a different different animal, a total different animal. No, I, I know what you mean because uh, when I was married to my first wife, you, you know, she was telling me, you know, she was from Venezuela. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at uh, at her home in Venezuela, yeah, they had a house. They have ke- help. I, I have a us. housekeeper, you know, mm-hmm. they had a maid sometimes, uh, yeah, things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get what you mean. No, that, that's good though. Mm-hmm. It, it teaches them you, you've got to work for what you want. Who are. Uh, some of the guys that you are 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 pushing right now. Remember, you can promote as much as you want on the show. So, who are some of your, the guys <coughs> that you are trying to, to promote and move up to the next level? Uh, uh, obviously, just the drivers you were just telling me about, but there are some others that are catching your eye. Eloy is on his way. Il- Eloy mm-hmm. is on his way. He's doing a very good job with Rev this year. He's learning a lot, and mm-hmm. uh, and and he has all the. Abilities. Ab- the abilities and also the attitude and mm-hmm. skills of track skills that he needs to to make it and also we started uh, working this year with Diego Mendes Torres who's racing at summer shootout okay um, is he in legends or the band legends. Legends. legends he's 16 okay. he's 16 okay he comes from go-kart racing in Mexico mm-hmm. pretty pretty good go-kart racer uh, he's a two-time national champion in Mexico mm-hmm. but uh, he's he, this is the first time he drives a mid-sized car, like, like an actual car with with a body on it, on with the legend car, and he's also very, very committed, very committed to, to their testing to the late models in Florence. So oh, okay. He and he was one of those kids that he was just thinking about Formula One, but when he came here, he was he was like what his first week here, and he one day he told us. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, this I, I, for real, this is what I want. I want to live in this city, and this I want this to be my day-to-day uh, yeah. job. Good for him. I, yeah. I work with him. I've been working with him for three years yeah. on the fitness and nutrition side. And, and he's sixteen. He's sixteen. <coughs> and Eloy is nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. But we came here three years ago with Eloy. Mm-hmm. He was sixteen. And now he's like, he's or um, starting to fly uh, by his own. Yes. Okay. So he's yeah understanding how. Yeah. Things yeah. And we have we still help him. Mm-hmm. We okay. were, uh, he yeah. raced at Florence uh, last Saturday in a late model. In a late model. Yeah. Okay. Late model. Cool. And we were there helping him. Um, still, there's a few stuff that he has to work on, communicating better with the crew chief. Uh, but most of it, he he got it covered. So he's starting to fly a little bit by his own. But we're still there, just in case anything he needs. He'll probably move up to Arca eventually, and he'll try to lean us on us again because it's a car that I know very well. I had a team that I raced for, and he will go to places that I know very well. So he'll probably lean back again on us. <laughs> okay. But uh, but he's starting to fly. On his yeah, own. you will remember him. He's mm. pretty good. He's pretty good. And cool. we also have Arturo. The, uh, the youngest he, one. The youngest one. He's the eleven, 11 year old. years yeah. old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's pretty good. He's uh, he's supposed to raise the bandos uh, yeah. last night, but uh, it rained out. Okay. And uh, he has a a real nice personality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a quite interesting driver. He's very very passionate about racing. That mm-hmm. he 
wakes up, dreams about racing, wakes up, talks about racing. Through that, the day he just thinks about racing, watches videos about racing. Like he's very, very passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Now, for an eleven-year-old, his parents are here with him. No, no he has, he's here we're, by himself. Yeah, we are his parents. <laughs> we brought oh, him all really? by himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what about schooling? Does he have to do homeschooling or right. things like he's that? He's in vacation right, right now. Right now, he's in he's summer in break. Vacation right now, summer yeah. vacation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what happens in a situation where you have? Too many drivers and not enough cars. So say like you had like say Rev doesn't have enough drivers, uh, enough cars to put a driver in. Can you talk to? We other don't teams? even have too many beds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. We might need to move to a bigger place. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, gotta get the air mattress ready. <laughs> we have our air we mattress. Have we have one. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. use it next week. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Oh wow. So you guys have already got too many drivers and and not enough places to put so. them. <laughs> yeah. Which, in a way, it's a good problem to have. It's a great problem. It's a good, for your yeah, it's a good problem. With uh, at the end, um, three or four drivers during the summer, it's okay. Mm-hmm. More than that, it's too many. Too many. Really? Yeah. Okay. But you guys are going to do this year round, though, right? Will you guys re- and race? And after this, we work with them to get into the program. So we put them in a late model. We bring them over to, to, for workouts, for media training, for everything before the combine. Okay. So we're still working with them during the year. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably this year we'll have some of them do a few races at the winter series or winter the, tour the or road course yeah, yeah. The, the winter heat series mm-hmm. I think winter they heat call series yep. yeah yeah with legends and the bandoleros yep okay and we're so, trying also to put them in a dirt car uh, a what car a dirt car dirt uh, car oh at millbridge yeah, yeah. yeah. an outlaw car yeah. oh okay yeah. well i got one for sale if you <laughs> if you want to buy one i got one for sale you know, how I'll, much I'll, let you go I'll sell, I'll, sell it to you. I'll sell it to you on a deal don't worry it's, it's got a good motor on it yeah we have to give them uh more seat time mm-hmm. because they're pretty used to race only a few races in Mexico. Like go kart, they only race six times mm-hmm. out of year. Um, when they come here, they don't realize that the kids are uh, jumping from one car to another on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I know. And wait when they turn their heads around and see how much seat time drivers are getting here. They are like, hey. Get me a car, get me a test or whatever. So. Right, La- it's laps. It's yeah. more yeah, and more, it's more laps. laps. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, there's nothing better to... It's a lifestyle at the end. Yeah. Yeah. To... I forgot how to put it into words, but the best way to improve your driving skills and sensibility, to me, is dirt racing. Oh, yeah. As far as, like, getting a feel and car yeah. control. And so yeah. You can oh. see uh, Kyle Busch right now. He's doing some... Dirt racing. Dirt racing. Right. I that is I think that is so cool that you guys want to tr- try the area of, of dirt racing. Have you guys ever even raced on dirt? I, either one of you? Yeah. Oh, you have yeah. raced yeah. on dirt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When, have, when have you run on dirt? I did a race this year in Mexico. Really? On a, on, on a truck? On the truck series. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Mexican truck series, which right. is uh, kind of like the old car tours trucks they used to have. Right, like late model trucks, right? Yeah, <laughs> but with a V6 <laughs> engine. A V6? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They make a lot of different sound. Right. Yeah, horrible sound. <laughs> yeah. They sound like a bumblebee. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, but, but the yeah. track is really nice. You the can Google awesome. it. Achilles Speedway is really, really nice. Uh, it has like 12 degree of banking. Yeah. Like 12 degree. And it's, uh, it's a half, half a mile. mile. Okay. Yeah. It's and, pretty fast. And you both ran the trucks on the dirt? No, a dirt uh, late model. You did a, a dirt late, mo- a late model. Where'd you car. do a dirt late model at? I did pretty good. Where at? Where'd you run? <laughs> yeah, in Aquiles, Aquiles, Aquiles in Mexico. Oh. In Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua. They have, they have dirt late models in Mexico? Very yeah. cool ones. Uh, like the ones that are here with the wedge bodies and yes. everything? Uh-huh. No shit. Yeah. Holy cow. All right, now I got to look that up. Okay. And the crowd is amazing. Really? Yeah. There's a rumor that NASCAR Mexico might have a race at the mm-hmm. track next year. Really? Yeah. Okay. Dirt's fun, isn't it? it, it it's it the is. best. Oh my god, it I love it. I, yeah, I know. I, I, I was there for a few laps only mm-hmm. because a few a friend from Chihuahua were uh, testing and racing, mm-hmm. and I jumped in a car and I was like, "Let me try this." Okay, do it for a 
few laps, I was there for a hundred. <laughs> I don't want to. He's not coming uh, in yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. It, so it, much fun. It is. I, I ran most of my career on asphalt, racing uh, midgets and modifieds, and then a couple. But in 2012, I started running on dirt at, at Millbridge and Mountain Creek, and I had such a blast. And yes, you get you you can go from dirt back to pavement and get faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you start to feel the feeling of the car. Right. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's that's great that you guys want to venture into the dirt stuff yeah, too. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. So. I love dirt racing on cars and on motorcycles. They're all the uh, the international speedway stuff. No, more like enduro stuff. Oh, um, okay. At motocross or enduro? Endurance. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, because oh, the. They, they do a whole bunch. They, well, here they have American Flat Track, which yeah. they run the yeah. big ovals. The guys. Yeah. Have you ever been to one of those no, races? No, I've oh, seen I've it. Those guys are out They're of crazy. their fucking <laughs> minds, yeah, yeah. man. Holy cow. Do you remember Jimmy Morales? The guy that uh, runs the Escuderia Telmex, uh, Escuderia Telmex I, I think program. So. I, met, I th- probably met he, him He's before. the one that uh, well, he ha- he break me back the, broke me back in the days. Okay, he would if hang out with Jose Sabates too? Yes. Jose Sabates yes. and yeah. Jimmy Morales. Yeah. Jimmy okay. Morales, he was really good on those bikes. Yeah. Flat track. Really? Yeah. Those guys are crazy. They're doing like 170 miles an hour on and a bike. I think they have the throttle wide open all, all the, the time. time. All like, the but time. they're not holding it. Like, it's just... It stays wide open. It's um yeah, they're, 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 they're crazy. Nuts. Yeah. They're, they're nuts. Absolutely yeah, nuts. Yeah, they're because nuts. Because when you crash... You crash. You are the yeah. body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you crash. Yeah. So, so yeah, we had uh, I had a guy uh, on here. He was a, a Pan American Superbike racer, uh, Andreas Savalos. And yeah. uh, he was telling me, you know, the times that he crashed and you know he get they get busted up and yep. they get hurt pretty good. That is a whole not nah, different, different, story. Story. Yeah. different yeah. level. Yeah. But cool. We'd love to see you guys out at the dirt tracks, man. That would yeah. be great. So. We'll be there tonight. Yeah, so, we'll probably go uh, see the tonight. It's uh, a yeah, DNQ. That's DNQ. just the, that's just the flat cards. It's not the micros or anything okay. like that. But uh, that's cool that you guys want to venture into uh, mm-hmm. into the dirt uh, realm. And plus, it's great training for your drivers. Yes, mm-hmm. it's something mm-hmm. different. It's something they're not used to. They've got you know, it's a different style. It's you a know, different they'll car. Get more mm-hmm. skills. And more they're skills. they're gonna feel. They're gonna feel. They're gonna have a different feeling in the seat of the pants. Yeah, you know, as far as as running on dirt. Well, that's awesome, guys. Yeah. We are getting uh, close to the end of the show, but before we go, uh, you know, this is where you guys can promote your stuff, plug your stuff. Uh, <laughs> who are some of the sponsors that you guys have got helping you out? Let us know what, what's going on. Yeah, so um, I would love to have everyone follow me on social media. I try to do my best on on replying as much as I can and uh, posting everything I'm doing. So you guys are more than welcome to follow me in uh, at Ruben Garcia Four on Instagram and X, and uh, well follow me. I raise the eighty eight car for Canels in the NASCAR Mexico Canels and Logitech. You in, can watch the races on YouTube. You can watch the races on YouTube, yeah, and they're okay. fun to watch. Yeah, live. Watching live with okay, Spanish live. broadcast, but yeah, you won't <laughs> understand anything, but <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, I, I would need a translator, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's so funny though because they're talking in in Spanish, but you can kind of tell when they're getting excited when they're talking, <laughs> you're gonna hear the voice go up. And they're fun like, races okay. to watch, also. I mean, they the, are this weekend in San Luis <laughs> is a short track, mm-hmm. um, it's probably pretty, our most pretty tough spectacular race, race. Pretty tough racing, and the fans. They they pack the places yes. too. Pack I the mean, places, I, yeah. I look in the grandstands and the grandstands are just They're overflowing. They're always full. Yeah. They're that always is one full. thing I will give to the Latin community because they get behind their sports stars, their music stars. You know, the the people that are trying to you know excel at their their field. They're I, a good, very good audience. Loyal, yeah. loyal fan base. Yes, that it's and amazing. Very very patient. I mean, mm. they passionate, pretty passionate, passionate uh, yeah. to the race. I mean. They don't even know who's racing, but they start like, like, uh, it's yelling. common that they fight on at the grandstands because their drivers get together. <laughs> yeah. 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 No kidding, it gets yeah. that bad. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so it's very similar to the United States, <laughs> 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 really. Oh, god. So, what about you, really? What about uh, your program sponsors? Uh, anyone that you want to thank or help? I want to thank, um, uh, uh, the people it's been helping us with the with the program I want to thank John Freeman because he gave us all the support um, I mean besides uh, the sunglasses and everything um, 
we used to have a sponsor, OC Fitness, which I sold it already. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but I want to thank all the people just like you that uh, give us an opportunity to talk about our program, uh, what we've been doing with the kids and everything. Mm -hmm. Thanks for everything. Oh, no. Yeah. We, for me, this is great because, you know, we all kind of worked together in the in the E-Series back mm -hmm. in the day. Yep. And I didn't get, I don't get to see you We're guys. We're not getting any younger. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, look at the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, when I was reporting for you guys, I had brown hair. So, <laughs> yeah, I get it. But no, it, for me, it's cool because all of the guys that came through K and N when I was there. I mean, it's half the Cup Series yeah. now. So just to be able to chat with you guys and to reminisce and, and to go bench racing again, it, it, it means a lot. It's it's well, a lot of fun. We're still doing it, just like different things. Once are racing, once we're, we're working all, with all the kids. still in the business. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. You're doing a podcast right now. I know, <laughs> and then the show's growing too. And you've so. been helping kids also, right? What's that? You've been helping uh, some, your friends. Kids yeah, some of my friends' kids, I help them out a little bit here and there. But it, it, it's for fun and, you know, just to be involved. For me, that's that's fun to do it is but thank you guys for coming on I thank, appreciate you it. Much, thank you very thank much thank you very much for Ruben. having us thank you Rogelio, that is Ruben Garcia and Rogelio Lopez joining us here on the Derek Pernasiglio show we want to thank you for tuning in and remember to follow us on our YouTube channel at the Derek Pernasiglio show you can also follow us on Facebook at the Derek Pernasiglio show as well we are also on X also known as Twitter TikTok and Instagram at Real DP Show. So for Ruben Garcia Jr. and Rogelio Lopez, I'm Derek Pernasiglio saying thanks for coming by and we'll see you the next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>